joining me now is Melanie Riedepal. Melanie, you managed to pivot your business, your food business, through the harshest part of the lockdown. So please talk to me about your business in Sugar Rush Park. It was, I think, you know, an, an opportunity that arose out of um, just just the, the the movement towards being outdoors and a, and a whole different take on where people wanted to spend their time. So yes, it was in the middle of the lockdown period when we decided to take over this restaurant. My partner and I have had uh, numerous restaurants before. And I think, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you definitely have that um, ability to pivot. Um, as I said, sometimes gracefully, sometimes not so gracefully. But the restaurant itself is part of this, this bigger picture, just outside, seven kilometers outside of Belito. It's called Sugar Rush Park because it's in the middle of a sugarcane field and it's surrounded by beautiful lush coastal forest. The foot traffic came first. And I think that's probably quite a unique thing for any business and certainly for a restaurant that there were people before the, the restaurant was even open. So we took it over really at a, at a period where the people were flocking um, just to get outdoors, we are in a in the park with with Holler Trails, who do um, a lot of. Uh, they've actually got 350 kilometers worth of outdoor uh, trail running trails and mountain biking trails, and it's really world class. Um, so people were starting to to come out, you know, when they were allowed to get out, um, and and the restaurant was really we just had to open out of necessity. You know, the park as a whole has all sorts of other aspects to it. It's not just the mountain biking and the trail running. Um, there's a little reptile um, rehabilitation center. Um, so there's, there's lots of aspects to the park. And I think we, we did start to work kind of organically together. Um, you know, I've told you this before, Giselle, but my, my husband is a chef and his background was always at these kind of far flung five star places in Norway fjords and, and Mozambique and places like that. So he's used to working within communities and bartering a lot. You know, the, it's a very old traditional way of doing things, but he's very open to that kind of thing. Um, there's also a community garden at Sugar Ash Park, which we've got going, you know, they got it going at the beginning of lockdown and we've, we've just kind of rejuvenated it now so that it sustains, the, it will start sustaining the restaurant a little bit more. Um, but they opened up, you know, the, it's, it's such a luxury to have so much land. Um, and the, the trails as well, you know, I can't speak on behalf of Jasper, but they certainly were, were chomping at the bit to, to get open. Um, and, and I think it was quite a, a challenge to maintain the trails as well for them. But, um, you know, we, I think social media and marketing, we share each other's um, kind of information and um, skill sharing and, and good old fashioned bartering um, with the other businesses within the park. Um, and I think that creates a sense of community and, and develops bonds that are really probably unprecedented in our lifetime. During this time, you received, did you receive help or mentorship? And can you share some insights from the lessons uh, that you learned and other restaurateurs could, could help? No, we definitely did. Our other restaurant is um, the Ocean Basket in Belito, which is on the beachfront. It's a beautiful location. Um, and we certainly did tap into the reason I mentioned that is because the CEO of Ocean Basket, Grace Harding, um, together with um, Natasha Sideris from Natasha's group, um, formed something called the Restaurant Collective very early on um, when this all happened. And it was really a, an incredible initiative. These two women drove a project that helped support businesses and gave us, you know, real tools to use to, to get through it. Um, and from the start, they said, um, Grace, well, we always tease Grace because she says, fight, 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 fight. And that's really the, the ethos of the time for restauranting. Um, but they gave us real, real tools to use. You know, how do you, how do you access the tourist money for your staff to make sure that they get something to survive throughout this period? How do you deal with um, your landlords to negotiate things? So they would provide actual documentation. And so I really credit Grace and Natasha for, for supporting. Um, and, you know, they didn't just limit that to their own brands. They opened up to all restaurants across the country. You must have faced a moment when you got extremely fearful. I had a good Shannon Blanc in the back who just hidden for quite some time. That helped uh, get through the darkest moments. Um, but I think, you know, I've got a good partner in my husband as well. We work really well together um, and we supported each other um, throughout this. And we've got such incredible staff as well um, that, you know, also kind of 
were just, I don't know, kept the light on for us. Um, and I think just to have a sense of humor about it all. I mean, you know, it's after it's after you realize that it's not quite, um, I don't want to say as bad as you think, but it's certainly, um, there is a light, you know, it's not, it's, we can get through this um, and we just have to find the way. Um, my husband always jokes about deflecting, just deflect, deflect, keep swimming through, you know, just focus on where, you, on where you're heading. Um, and obviously with a good chin and blank in the back helped a little bit. I think ethics certainly plays a part in that, you know, um, I think the restaurant industry has, has a bit of a rap for, for also mistreating staff and not paying people properly. I hate to say it, but, you know, I was a, a spur waitress from the age of 15. I think we all, my generation was certainly the spur, the spur waiter in way. <laughs> yeah, I think we learned all our life skills from spurs, to be honest, good training. Um, but I think, you know, over the years, it's, it's, it's really something that needs to be addressed. And I, I certainly know part of the Restaurant Collective initiative was to start addressing you know, an industry that doesn't always get monitored the way other industries get monitored. So I think ethics plays a role. Um, and, you know, waiters and, and back of house staff and front of house staff need to be treated ethically and they need to, you know, we need to adhere to the Department of Labor rules. And I think that's, that's definitely the first step um, to a healthy industry. And I think if you do cross all those T's and dot all those I's, it certainly creates a healthier business and a, and a happier um, staff component. And, and, you know, they then know that you, you do care um, and you're doing things by, by the book. Um, so I think ethics is something that's vital. And then sharing skills. Um, I've always been a big believer in, in skills development and sharing. Um, I used to be, I have lectured at tertiary level as well, because it's something I feel really passionate about. And part of the Restaurant Collective initiative was to, to share and develop a CETA approved um, management program that Ocean Basket has also opened up to, to the, the industry as a whole. And it's free to use, it's developed by a teacher, an ex-teacher, and it's now CETA approved, you know, and that's something that they've shared with everybody to, to you know, so a manager can now get an actual certification after doing this and it's online, it's readily available and it's free and easy to access. So stuff like that, I think, is, is vital to the health of the industry and to the health of your business and to, for your own personal growth and, and happiness, really.